going to start with our speaker, Dr. Phil Zuckerman. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Sure. Oh, well, why not? That sounds like it's not, but he, he'll, he'll live with it, right? Um, he has a PhD in sociology from the University of Oregon and is currently a professor of sociology and teaches a graduate seminar on the sociology of religion. Um, in 2005, he was a guest professor in Denmark, and he did research on secularization and its impact in society, and I'm going to let him take it away from there. So, thank you, Phil. Okay. You bet. There you go. Well, thank you. Thanks to Steph Campbell, who contacted me and has been emailing me and gave me excellent directions on how to get here. Uh, yeah, okay. It's so nice to know this uh, organization exists in the heart of Orange County. <laughs> Woo! So, thank you for existing and for fighting to protect uh, what needs to be protected and uh, fighting the good fight. So I could lecture for seven or eight or nine hours if you'd like, but I do have to go to a wedding this afternoon back in Claremont. And uh, also I feel like in this kind of a assemblage of people, it's probably uh, more engaging to have Q&A, some discussion, some debate. So I'm going to shoot for 20 minutes just to sort of convey the kind of work I do. And I don't know if all of the research I, I do uh, is going to be exciting to you or not, but after I've presented it, then uh, you can t pick at what you want or debate with what you want or ask further questions. Um, so about, uh, how can I say, a few years ago, now, five or six years ago now, I was asked, uh, I got an email from Michael Martin, who's sort of the big philosopher of atheism in this country. So it was very exciting to get an email from him. And he said he was editing a book called The Cambridge Companion to Atheism uh, for Cambridge University Press, and it's going to be different chapters on various aspects of atheism. And when I write the one on sociology, specifically getting together all the information on how many atheists there are in the world by country, and so on and so forth. And I said, sure. Now, I'm what's known as a qualitative researcher more of an ethnographic, more along the lines of cultural anthropology. So I don't deal with statistics too much. I had to get through some courses in graduate school, and I uh, broke out in a rash each week. <laughs> so it was good for the dermatologists. But um, so I said, well, we'll see. I'll, see what I, I'll do my best. And I had assumed that this information would be readily available. That, and it wasn't, actually. It's not so easy to get national data international data, especially about what people believe, um, to get random samples uh, that can be generalized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I did spend about six to seven months at least collecting what I could find, what, what, what surveys I could find at the national level, at the international level, so on and so forth. And what stood out to me as I was trying to calculate how many people believe in God or unsure or don't know or don't answer or yes, maybe, somewhat, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, was um, as I started compiling it by regions of the world and by countries, two countries kept uh, popping out at, at either the top of the list or the bottom of the list, depending on your predilection. But those were Denmark and Sweden, which um, seem to be the least religious countries in the world. Among the least religious, it depends on what measure, and it depended on the study, but time and time again, whether it was importance of God in people's life, views about the Bible, do you want politicians to be religious or not? In fact, Denmark leads the world in having something like over 85% of Danes do not want their politicians to be religious. Um, Sweden's uh, close after them. Well, what I knew, I, I, I've been a Scandiophile for most of my life, and uh, so I had been to Denmark and Sweden. I have a cousin in Denmark, and I've always loved the um, progressive politics there. I've always loved their uh, tremendously successful welfare states. And so uh, as I was uh, gathering this data, I said, well, this is an interesting coincidence. I know that Denmark and Sweden represent sort of the greatest achievement, I believe, in modern 
socio-political economic structures. These were among the poorest nations in the, uh, in the Western world 100, 150 years ago, and now they're among the most prosperous, humane, egalitarian, and successful societies. Not just successful in terms of economic equality, women's rights, and so on and so forth, but they're extremely moral societies, at least moral as I understand it. Uh, and of course, for me, moral is equated with treating each other uh, with uh, decency, not you know how often you masturbate or something. And so, in terms of, I think they do lead the world there too. But in terms of, you know, in terms of uh, protecting the the poor, the disadvantaged, the disabled, uh, the most vulnerable in their society are so well looked after. And so I thought, wow, this is important information because it counters the claims of many American pundits on the radio and in our government. So I decided to go and live there, fulfilling a dream of mine that I had for many years to actually live there for a while. I lived there with my family for 14 months. Uh, I ended up doing about 150 in-depth interviews with people because even though there's extensive survey data, I wanted to dig deeper there and really have in-depth conversations with people from all walks of life, uh, from nurses to members of parliament, from police officers to uh, 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 PE teachers, and to just kind of get into their worldview as best I could while also living there. And I found two things. I definitely found what we might call a cultural Christianity or a cultural Lutheranism. Um, there's no question that you hear the church bells ring every Sunday, no matter where you are. Uh, people, uh, most people like to have their children baptized at church as a, as a wonderful family ritual. Most, most young uh, adolescents go through a confirmation ritual. Most people want to get married in the church and get buried in the church. So there's no question that if you ask a Dane or a Swede, are you Christian, most will say yes. But they are Christian the way probably many Jews that you know are Jewish. They certainly identify that way. They associate it with their heritage, perhaps their childhood, but they don't actually believe in the religion. In fact, if you ask them specific details, they'll laugh at you. I mean, I, I had that experience hundreds of times. I mean, you actually ask a Dane or a Swede, do you believe that Adam and Eve really existed or in the virgin birth? And, and they, uh, they can't believe you're asking such a ridiculous question. Um, or similar to some many cultural Catholics that you may know, people who, you know, their Catholicism is part of their upbringing, part of their family richness, but they don't actually believe it anymore, and they certainly don't go anymore. They're not adherents. In fact, uh, Denmark and, uh, has the lowest weekly church, <coughs> weekly church attendance rate in the world. So um, when we measure religion, usually in sociology, we, we talk about the three Bs, beliefs, behaviors, and belonging. And, uh, and on all those measures... Dades and Swedes score quite low, except for belonging. They often are members of their national church, which is a birthright and uh, happens just upon being birthed. And they'll actually even tax subsidize the church, which is very interesting for this group, because in Denmark, they're about the most secular humans on the planet, and yet they willingly pay, pay about 1% of their taxes each year to keep the churches nice and well painted. They never go, but they like the idea that they are there. <laughs> It's very interesting, and we can talk about that. Um, but in addition to this cultural religiosity, I found the only word I could think of was a bald secularity. And by bald secularity, I mean they are so secular, they don't even give a shit about religion. It's so not part of their reality. They don't, it's, they're indifferent. And indifference is, I would say, an ultimate secularity. Because if you really care about religion, and you can debunk religion, and you can cite chapters from the Bible where God does X, Y, and Z, and you can you know, uh, talk about the injustices of the church in this uh, era of history, and you can really sink your teeth into it, that means you, are, you care about religion. You think about it, you deal with it, you acknowledge it, you, you even know a lot about it. Um, Scandinavians are so secular they, they, this is just not, doesn't take up their time. They have, they're utterly oblivious. And I found some people who were just truly uh, couldn't, it was about as important to them as tropical fish or the latest technology in cardboard. I mean, they just had no clue. And it was really amazing to experience that kind of secularity. Okay, so from my research, I'm gonna, I, 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 I drew sort of three conclusions. Number one, I, can, I believe I can strongly counter the claim that many conservatives and many religious people make, which is that, you know, without God, a society will fall apart. Or without strong faith in God, a society will be hell on earth. 
or without a strong, you know, uh, faith in God and, and, and love of the Lord and love of the Bible and love for the hot, wet, sticky blood of Jesus, if these things, or Muhammad, uh, as it were, um, um, although he shed more semen than blood, I think. But anyway, aside from that, sorry, you're all adults. Um, aside from that, uh, uh, that, you know, without that, society will be chaotic, it will be destroyed, it will fall apart. Clearly, we can counter that. Um, and I call it the sort of theo-sociological fallacy, because it's actually making a, a causal argument that, you know, faith in God will have positive societal results, and a lack of faith in God will have a, a dismal societal results. And I thought, well, this is wonderful. Let's test it. Let's look and see. Um, so I went beyond Scandinavia, lovely as it is. It doesn't represent much of the world. Uh, um, there's your small population countries. Denmark's about five and a half million. Sweden's about nine million. Um, so I began to look at all the other countries. And based on not only my tallying, but the work of Engelhart, Norris, and et cetera, et cetera, we can safely kind of guesstimate the 20 most secular countries on earth right now. Again, according to these three Bs of belief, behavior, and belonging. Uh, and there's different countries sometimes are stronger in one, but not others. But when we average it out, the 20 least religious countries in the world today appear to be, in no particular order, but generally this is it, Denmark and Sweden, Czech Republic, South Korea, Estonia, France, Germany, Japan, Bulgaria, Norway, United Kingdom, Hungary, Belgium, the Netherlands, Slovenia, New Zealand, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Slovenia, oops, already said that, and honorable mentions, they didn't quite make the top 20, but they were percentages very close, Canada, Australia, and Finland. Now, most of these are European nations, but not all. Take, for instance, Japan, South Korea, if we take the 20 most religious, or conversely, the least secular nations on earth, we get the following. Nigeria, Uganda, Philippines, Morocco, Pakistan, Egypt, Algeria, Malawi, Bangladesh, Indonesia, El Salvador, Iran, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Sierra Leone, Turkey, Senegal, and honorable mentions would go to virtually every country in Africa, every country in the Middle East with the exception of Israel, every country in the West Indies, and every country in Latin America with the possible exception of, does anybody know the least religious country in Latin America? Any guesses? Chile. Chile. Costa Rica. Argentina. Closer? Uruguay. <laughs> of all places. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I did was, if you think of those 20 countries, 40 countries I just named, and then we look at measures like health care, life expectancy, infant mortality, educational attainment, poverty or lack thereof, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, violence, particularly murder and aggravated assault, women's rights, the well-being and health care of children, prosperity and economic competitiveness, GDP, environmentalism, gay and lesbian rights, minority rights, STD rates, peacefulness, corruption, hunger, homelessness, etc., etc. I trust you can all draw the correlations in your brain on which countries do better, the most religious or the most secular. Since writing my book on this stuff, I decided to do the same thing for states within the United States. Let's see if there's any correlations here. Again, looking at the three Bs of belief, behavior, and belonging, it's tricky. It depends on the study, but we got a lot of data. Particularly, uh, the new uh, Pew Forum uh, has a lot of data. Uh, the ARIS uh, data, there's a lot out there. It seems as of the top ten most religious...